In the previous lectures, we had been looking at the autoregressive process and the moving average process in great details. We had been looking at the different properties of these models and we have seen that one model is a complement of the other. So, they actually are dual processes which are just sort of complements each other in the sense that if you have a autoregressive model and you can identify it through a PSAF, then you can identify the moving average model through a SEF. You can write an autoregressive model of order P in terms of a moving average process of order infinity and similarly you can write a moving average process of order Q in terms of the autoregressive process of order infinity. So, they sort of complement each other. What we will do today is to look at the estimation problem of the parameters of this model. So, we have identified the model say and we need to find out the parameters so that we can use the model in further studies. Now, for that we will be looking at the autoregressive model in great details and we will be looking at the usual maximum likelihood and the least square methods but we will be more concerned with what is referred to as the Yule Walker equations. And to solve these equations, we will look through an algorithm that is referred to as the Durbin Levinson algorithm. The moving average process is a little bit more difficult to handle because most of the terms on the right hand side are unknown to us, we have unknown innovations and hence it requires a different sort of treatment. What we do here is we will just be mentioning one of the algorithms which is a more general form of algorithm that can be used elsewhere as well and we will see how we can estimate the moving average parameters through this. We will begin by looking at the estimation of the AR parameters. So, the ARP model is x t is alpha 1 x t minus 1 etcetera up to alpha p x t minus p plus the innovations epsilon t. So, epsilon t is as before are white noise, they have 0 means and a constant variance of sigma square and suppose we have n observations from this. So, there are n time points that we observe the series x t in. Now, if you look at the parameters here, part of the parameters that come from the model itself that is alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha p and then again sigma square would be unknown and hence we can take that to be a parameter as well. So, we have p plus 1 parameters in this model. There are several estimation methods, we will be looking at the least square methods which is always the simplest. We will also be looking at the maximum likelihood method assuming that the underlying process is normal. We will look at something which is very special to the ARP model, the Yule Walker equations and we will see how we can estimate the parameters using the Yule Walker equations. But let us begin with the least squares method. Now, since the innovations epsilon t that we have on the right hand side of the model, these are uncorrelated to x t minus j that is all the past values of x. The current value of x is not on the right hand side, it is on the left hand side. So, it is the response, so we need not be bothered with it. Past values are uncorrelated and hence we can use the ordinary least squares. This will give us consistent estimator for alpha. How do you do that? We generally write x t as x t, x t minus 1, x t minus p plus 1. So, this is a p dimensional vector that we write. Write u t as epsilon t and p minus 1 zeros. So, we have another vector with just the first element which is non 0 and the rest are zeros. And then we define this matrix A. A has as the first row the parameters alpha 1, alpha p minus 1 to alpha p and the remaining rows are made up 
the first component is i p minus 1. So, this takes up the first p minus 1 columns and the p minus 1 remaining rows and the remaining column is a column of zeros. So, we define this matrix A this way. Once we do this, it is easy to see that the model 1 can be written as x t is equal to A x t minus 1 plus e t. So, the first row of this model would be the original model that we have. So, we have x t on the right hand side and the first row of A into the x t minus 1 vector which would give us the model that we had before and the first term of u t is epsilon. Well, the remaining elements would primarily be identities in the sense that on the left hand side we would have x t minus 1 equal to x t minus 1 on the right hand side etcetera. So, we can always write the model 1 in this form and uh, we call it a multivariate AR1 model. We need not be too bothered about multivariate models, but you can see that this is a one step model and UTs are the errors. So, if we try and minimize UT prime UT that is the squares of the errors, then we get the least square estimators. Now, remember that alpha is the first row of A. So, we just need to get the estimates of the first row of A. We are not interested in the other rows and the alpha hat comes out to be the usual estimator that we get by the least squares. So, it is x t minus 1 x t minus 1 prime inverse x t minus 1 into x t. Remember the last x t is a scalar and we are only bothered with the first row. So, usually this should have been uh, bold x t, but that means the vector x t prime but we just take the first element because we are interested in the first row of A only and this gives us the parameter estimates. These are the least square estimators and once we get alpha hat, we can define sigma hat square as just the square of the residuals summed over T and divided by an appropriate divisor, which can be the degrees of freedom, very often it can also be N which would be asymptotically equivalent. As opposed to this, we can use the maximum likelihood estimator. Now, when we look at the maximum likelihood estimator, we start by assuming a distributional form. So, let epsilon t be normal 0 sigma square independently for all t. Now, once we have assumed normality, we can write the likelihood function in this manner. So, epsilon t is a normal. So, we have a joint normal distribution which is 1 by twice pi to the power of n by 2 sigma to the power of n and e to the power of minus 1 by twice sigma square summation epsilon t square. And we can write epsilon as x t minus alpha 1 x t minus 1 etcetera. And then we have the likelihood in terms of the parameters alpha as well as sigma and then we can maximize L, but notice that maximizing this L is the same as minimizing this summation x t minus alpha 1 x t minus 1 etcetera in terms of alpha. So, basically this boils down to the least square method. So, as we do in regression as well, the least square method and the maximum likelihood method becomes equivalent if the error is normally distributed. So, again we get the same estimator. Of course, when we use the maximum likelihood estimator in that case the variance of estimator that is sigma hat square has a slightly different divisor, but for large samples this two would be equivalent to the least square estimator estimate. Now, let us look at the more interesting Yule Walker technique. In the Yule Walker technique, we have first the AR model and what we do is we pre multiply the model by x t minus h, where h is greater than 0 and then take expectations. 
So, we have expectation of x t x t minus h on the left hand side and similarly each term on the right hand side is multiplied by t minus h and we take the expectation of that. Notice that in 1 the last term is going to be 0 because epsilon t is uncorrelated to x t minus h. So, the last term is going to be 0 and since expectation of x t is equal to 0. So, the product x t x t minus h expectation of that is going to be the covariance and hence once you would imply that on the left hand side we have the autocorrelation autocovariance function gamma h where that is equal to alpha 1 gamma h minus 1 because we have one lag less and etcetera up to alpha p gamma h minus p. This in general is referred to as the Yule Walker equations. Dividing both sides by gamma naught, we can reduce this in terms of rho h. So, we can write this as rho h is alpha 1 rho h minus 1 to alpha p rho h minus p. Now, if we take remember that rho is a even function. So, rho minus h is equal to rho h and then now if we take h equal to 1 to p, we have rho 1 is equal to alpha 1 p rho naught etcetera and for the last one if you take h equal to p in this case the first one was h equal to 1 you get rho p is equal to alpha 1 rho p minus 1 etcetera and this whole set would be the yule walker equation. So, now we have p equations and these p equations are in the p unknowns alpha 1 to alpha p and we can solve these equations provided we know the rho h's. So, if you know the autocorrelations from the samples, then we know these values and we can substitute those rho values by rho hat and then we can S solve for the alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha p from this p equations. That would primarily be the estimates through the yule walker method. Also for the variance we have h equal to 0. So, if you take h equal to 0 then expectation of epsilon t x t equal to sigma square. So, multiply by x t the autoregressive process and then take expectation and the, since the last term is now sigma square you will end up with gamma naught is equal to alpha 1 gamma 1 plus alpha p gamma p plus sigma square. And now if you know the alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha p values since the gammas are can be obtained from the sample we can get an estimate for sigma square this way. So, we get an given the alphas we get an estimate of sigma square, but in most cases the population values of rho h would be unknown as I had been saying and we need to substitute this by the sample values. Let us see how we can do that. Remember that R h which is the sample version of the autocorrelation would be gamma hat h by gamma naught hat, where gamma hat h is from the sample 1 by n summation over the observations x t minus x bar x t plus h minus x bar. Assuming of course, there is stationarity we can use x bar. So, once you get that you now get your R h and substitute the rho by the r h values. And if you look at the p equations you can put them in a matrix form. So, on the left hand side you have this p equations put in r 1, r 2, r p and the right hand side you have a matrix multiplied by the vector of the parameters. How do you solve for this? You have let us call the left hand side vector as r p, the matrix as capital R p and you have the parameter vector as alpha p. I am using a p for alpha as well because it denotes the order of the process. In that case you can estimate alpha p as r p inverse small r p. Now, very often what happens is that this inversion may be difficult because if you have to check for all p that p is reasonably large then you have to do this inversions several times. So, there is a very nice algorithm by Durbin and Levinson which actually allows us to circumvent this problem. 
let us see how we can use the Devin Levinson al algorithm which is recursive by nature to solve the problem. To do that we will just make a small change, we will write the ARP model with a double suffix. The first one denoting the order of the process. So, x t is this alpha p 1, x t minus 1, etcetera, alpha p p, x t minus p. So, the first suffix actually tells us that the parameter is from a ARP model. Now, let us see how the algorithm works. Let us start recursively with p equal to 1, 2, etcetera. For p equal to 1, we have a single parameter alpha 1, we will call this alpha 1, 1 in this case. So, alpha 1 1 hat as we have already seen is equal to r 1 and the variance comes out to be the error variance. So, sigma 1 hat square would be gamma hat naught into 1 minus alpha 1 1 hat square. This is the usual regression type of estimates that we get. When p equal to 2, we have alpha 2 2 hat is gamma 2 hat minus alpha 1 hat gamma hat 1 by sigma 1 hat square and alpha 2 hat 2 1 hat is alpha 1 1 hat minus alpha 2 2 hat alpha 1 1 hat and we also get the estimate of the variance. The important thing to note here is that when we go to the second equation that is for p equal to 2, first we estimate alpha 2 2 hat that is alpha p p type of parameters. So, alpha 2 2 hat you see is in terms of the known gammas which we have estimated from the sample and in terms of the alpha 1 1 hat that we have got at the previous step for p equal to 1 and sigma 1 hat square which again also we have got for p equal to 1. So, having done p equal to 1 we get these two values and once you get to this these two values you can calculate alpha 2 2 hat. And then the other component that is alpha 2 1 hat we can get this again as alpha 1 1 hat which we have from the previous equation from p for p equal to 1 and the alpha 2 2 hat which we just now calculated and we get the alpha 2 1 hat as well. And similarly for the variance it depends on what we have just estimated that is alpha 2 2 hat as well as the variance at the previous step. So, you see the we require the p 1 p equal to 1 results to get to the p equal to 2 results. In general what happens? So, for any p we can write alpha p p hat as gamma p hat which we estimate and in terms of a combination of whatever we have got before that is alpha p minus 1 j hat. So, alpha p minus 1 j means the estimates we have got at the a r p minus 1 stage that is when we have assumed the order to be p minus 1 and in terms of sigma p minus 1 hat square. And we get this sort of an equation as far as the other parameters are concerned. And you can see that on the left hand side we have p 1 p p minus 1 that is the parameters for the ARP and on the right hand side we have the estimates of the parameters at the p minus 1 -th step which we have already got plus the alpha p p hat which we have got right now just before this. So, on the right hand side everything is known as long as we have done the p minus 1 step and the first component here. So, the other components p minus 1 components of the ARP model now can be estimated and sigma p hat square similarly can be obtained from the previous sigma hat square at the p minus 1 -th step into 1 minus alpha p p hat square. So, we can get all the parameters of the ARP model just recursively from what we have done at the p minus 1 -th step and more importantly we do not need to do any matrix inversion in this case very simple calculations. So, the Derman Levinson algorithm actually uses the Yulwacher method without the inversion form and gives us very simple ways of calculating the parameters. Also interestingly as a by byproduct what we get is alpha p p hat and this is the sample partial autocorrelation of order p. So, 
every time you do a new process from the previous step, the first thing that you calculate is the diagonal element alpha p p hat and that basically is the partial autocorrelation. Now, you know that the partial autocorrelation actually determines the order of the process. So, if this becomes insignificant, you need not bother to fit higher order models. So, if at the kth step, you find that the k plus 1 alpha hat becomes alpha that is alpha hat k plus 1 k plus 1 becomes insignificant, you stop at the kth step because the partial autocorrelation has become insignificant. So, this is the Derwin Levinson method. Now, let us look at how we can estimate the moving average parameters. These are much more difficult because if you look at the moving average, the moving average has got unknown parameters beta j is on the right hand side as well as it has the innovations which are unknown as epsilon t is we call it the errors or innovations or white noise these would be unknowns. So, it has nothing on the right hand side to bank upon like we had for the autoregressive model. So, how to do this? Now, traditionally there had been an ad hoc method which was followed and this was to invert the m a q to an a r infinity. We saw that we can always do that. So, we write the m a q in terms of the a r infinity. In fact, we get a relationship between the parameters of the m a q and the a r infinity parameters. Then what we do is we truncate the a r to a certain order. So, because if you go further and further back obviously, we would expect that the dependence would be less and less. So, maybe reasonably we can go back to some, some stage and beyond that we will assume that there is no influence and hence we will cut it off at that time point. So, that would be the order of the a r. So, I cannot we cannot estimate a r infinity because there will be an infinite number of parameters. So, make it finite at a reasonable order and you have a a r model. You can estimate the a r parameters using either of the methods you talked about the least square the moving average as a rather the maximum likelihood or the Yule Walker method. Once you have done that, you can now use the relationship between the m a parameters and the a r parameters to get the estimates of the m a parameters. You solve for this, you have you take some number of equations may be q equations involving the m a parameters and the a r estimates and then you solve for them to get the estimates of the m a parameters. On the other hand, there is another technique which is referred to as the innovation algorithm which can be used. Now, this is a more generic method. So, it is not necessary that the innovation algorithm is restricted to the moving average. It can be used elsewhere as well, but we have a problem with the moving average currently. So, we will be using it for the moving average and we will be describing it in terms of the moving average. So, now if you go back and look at the Derwin Levinson algorithm, we had predicted x key value as values which depends on the past values of x. So, t x t depends on x t minus 1 etcetera and we wrote this and we found the coefficients for the x t minus j's. The innovation algorithm considers a different representation. It predicts x t hat on the basis of the residuals. So, instead of taking x t minus j, what this algorithm does is to take x t minus j minus x t minus j hat, which is the estimated s t minus j or the predicted x t minus j and then looks at this combination taking theta into account and gets a prediction for x t hat. So, th this is the basic difference between the Derwin Levinson and the innovation algorithm. Interestingly, while the Derwin Levinson depends on the past values, this depends on the residuals and the residuals mind you are the innovations. So, basically it would be sort of the innovations that we are looking at and hence we can see 
that this can be very quickly identified with the moving average process, which is primarily a combination of the innovations. So, this algorithm can be used for the MAQ process. We will not go into the details, but we will give you a very quick idea of how this works. So, we write x t is epsilon t plus beta q 1 epsilon t minus 1 etcetera. Again using the first suffix to denote the order of the MA process. So, q stands for the order of the process and then starting with sigma naught hat square which is gamma hat naught. You can do recursively for q equal to 1, then q equal to 2, then q equal to 3 etcetera. We can get the beta hat q q minus k is this way and this for all values of k running from 0 1 to q minus 1 and similarly we can get an estimate for the variance as well. Just look at beta hat q q minus k it has it involves basically what has happened previously that is gamma hat q minus k and the previous step beta q. So, if you fit in a model of order 2, you use those estimates to estimate the parameters of the model with order 3 and then use that those to get the estimates for model 4. So, again this is done recursively like the Derman Levinson algorithm. So, the innovation algorithm is more generic and uh, this is one way that we can actually estimate the parameters of the moving average model. In today's lecture, we had been looking at the estimation of the AR and the MA par parameters. We first looked at the AR model and we saw that we can use the usual least square method or if we assumed normality of the errors, then we can use the maximum likelihood method and as in most cases, the two methods become equivalent. On the other hand, we can use what are referred to as the Yule Walker methods. This is very specific to the autoregressive process and we can estimate the parameters given the autocorrelations from the samples. We can estimate the parameters using the Yule Walker equations. But very often this is difficult to solve, particularly if p is even slightly large. And instead, what we do is we use the Durban Levinson algorithm to estimate the parameters through a recursive relationship. So, we start with p equal to 1, then go to p equal to 2, and so on and so forth. And also, as a byproduct of this method, we get an estimate of the PSEF and the PSEF of the AR process remember actually determines the order of the process. As we saw the moving average process is more difficult because we have the innovations on the right hand side which are unknown and we suggested that we can do that through an algorithm which is referred to as the innovation algorithm. It is a more generic sort of algorithm which can be applicable elsewhere but we can apply that to the moving average process as well.